can to incite it, as they used Gates just last week, that mulatto from Harvard. Continuing, to subdue the low countries a second time and to make himself absolute by which they mean to tyrannize at pleasure, than to govern according to the restrictions he had accepted. Is not the American president to govern with restrictions? Is not the United States Constitution a document of limitations of power? It's supposed to be. But the president has unlimited powers with his executive orders. The Congress has unlimited powers. It's now a parliament because it can spend money on anything it wants to, including the reproductive act of a fruit fly. And the Supreme Court can make rulings on anything it wants to rule. It has jurisdiction on anything. It can decide who's president and who isn't. The Supreme Court made George Bush the second president. There is no limitation of power on the federal executive, on the federal legislative, and the federal judicial. And that's another reason that we white men who believe on God and believe the Bible need to do exactly what these Dutch Protestants have done here. Continuing. The king of Spain, following these evil counselors, sought by all means possible to reduce this country, stripping them of their ancient privilege to slavery under the government of Spaniards. Isn't that what's happening right now? Isn't this government being, isn't this people here in North America being stripped of our ancient common law rights? Nobody has the common law right to work anymore. It's all a privilege. And reducing us to slaves under foreign government, namely the foreign government of the Pope. But Spain has something to do with it because, you see, King Juan Carlos, is his company is busy uh, planning the building of the NAFTA corridor, the superhighway that's going to cut this country in half. And you know who his attorney is? His brother, Nida Malta Rudolph Giuliani. Continuing, showing the little regard he had for his people. George Bush, it's nothing but a GD piece of paper, as he said of the Constitution. So contrary to the duty which a good prince owes to his subjects, sent the Duke of Alba with a powerful army to oppress this land. That was 10,000 soldiers, which was a lot at that time, who for his inhuman cruelties is looked upon as one of its greatest enemies, accompanied with Jesuit counselors too, like himself. The Duke of Alba sent for the chief nobility in the king's name under pretense of taking their advice. And they who believed his letters were seized and prosecuted as criminals before him who had no right and at last without hearing their defense sentenced them to death which was publicly and ignominiously executed. You know how they killed Horn and the others, the other uh, leaders of Holland? They beheaded them publicly beheaded them. And, and by the way, Chairman Mao did this very same thing. Chairman Mao called for any, any, any good advice, and when the, when the intellectuals came out to advise him, he killed them. That's because Chairman Mao was a Jesuit too. The others resigned, even though he expelled the Jesuits in 1949, he was secretly ruled by the Jesuits. The Jesuits secretly ruled communism and openly ruled fascism. Continuing. The others residing in foreign countries were declared outlawries and had their estates confiscated so that the poor subject could make no use of their fortresses nor be assisted by their princes in defense of their liberty against the violence of the Pope. You see, the Netherlands are saying that Spain was controlled by the Pope and the Pope is ultimately responsible for this. That's exactly what I'm saying on this broadcast. Everything that's going down in Washington, D.C. is going down by virtue of a decree from the Pope in the Vatican carried out by Jesuits in their military fortresses in this country called universities. Fordham and Georgetown in particular. All these considerations give us more than sufficient reason to renounce the king of Spain and seek some other powerful and more gracious prince to take us under his protection. And more especially as these countries have been for these 20 years abandoned to disturbance and oppression by their king, during which time the inhabitants were not treated as subjects but enemies, enslaved forcibly by their own governors. Isn't that what happened here in our states? that our governors have enslaved us? Tell me one governor that acknowledges your common law right to work, out of which if you derive monies from that common law work, right to work, it's not income and can't be excise tax. Name one governor that's defended your common law right to work. 
And that Masonic Jew, Ed Rendell, here in Pennsylvania, he sure ain't one of them. Continuing. At last we found by experience that nothing would be obtained of the king by prayers and treaties, which latter he made use of to divide and weaken the provinces, that he might the easier execute his plan rigorously, by subduing them one by one, which afterwards plainly appeared by certain proclamations and prescriptions published by the king's orders, by virtue of which we and all officers of the United Provinces, with all our friends, are declared rebels, as were the Southern Confederates, and as such to have forfeited our lives and estates. <laughs> so they declare their independence after many, many prayers and treaties and remonstrances, and so now they're declared rebels, outlaws, and therefore, therefore have forfeited their lives and estates. Anybody who can find them can put them to death. Thus, by rendering us odious to all, he might interrupt our commerce, likewise reducing us to despair. That's right, we're going to take away your credit card, we're not going to let you buy ourselves, we're going to seize your bank account. That's just what the IRS does. The Pope's IRS, Ignatius's Revenue Service, that's what it is. Ignatius of Loyola's Revenue Service. <laughs> what they did then, they do now. Likewise, reducing us to despair, offering a great sum to any that would assassinate the Prince of Orleans. So having no hope of reconciliation and finding no other remedy, we have, agreeable to the law of nature in our own defense, and for maintaining the rights and privileges and liberties of our countrymen, wives and children, the latest posterity from being enslaved by the Spaniards, been constrained to renounce allegiance to the King of Spain. <laughs> Amen and pursue such methods as appear to us most likely to secure our ancient liberties and privileges. You see, these guys had guts. These guys really believed God. These guys really believed that Romans 13 wasn't written to defend tyranny. It was written to defend the punishment of evil and the reward of good. And when a, a leader became a tyrant, they no longer owed their allegiance to him and regarded a righteous thing to resist him. That's Protestantism. That's Calvinism. And that's why the Jesuits hate Calvinism, calling it the abomination of the earth. Because it had not been for Calvinism, there would have been no Reformation. There would have been no meeting the armies of the Pope on the battlefield. And it would have been crushed. The Bible without the prince and his guns and his army. The gospel without being defended by the prince against the papal armies and conspiracy of the Jesuits would have been crushed. You need both the Bible, the sword of the Spirit, and the sword of just defense, wielded by an army, subject to a loyal prince, a loyal president, who wants to fight for the benefit of his people, and not to betray us into the hands of the Pope. As was the case of Vietnam, as was the case of Korea, Korea as the case of World War II, as is now the case in Iraq, we're being betrayed by agents of the Pope. Know all men by these presents, that, being reduced to the last extremity, as above mentioned, we have unanimously and deliberately declared, and do by these presents declare, that the King of Spain has forfeited, ipso jure, all hereditary right to the sovereignty of these countries, low countries, and are determined from henceforward not to acknowledge his sovereignty or jurisdiction, nor any act of his relating to the domains of the Low Countries, that's the Netherlands, nor make use of his name as prince, nor suffer others to do it. Unquote. J. D. Asselier, 1581, States General of the United Province, Provinces, the Dutch Declaration of Independence, and I would add the model of our American Declaration of Independence. Calvinistic and biblically based. That leads me to this, my white brethren, who have believed the gospel, 